Supporters of program, uh, the program known as DACA held demonstrations outside the White House as Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced an end to the amnesty program. Recindency permits will not be cancelled immediately but will instead be phased out as they expire over the coming months and years. Effectuated under the Obama administration is being rescinded. The DACA program was implemented in 2012 and essentially provided a legal status for recipients for a renewable two-year term, worker authorization, and other benefits, including participation in the Social Security program uh, to 800,000 mostly adult illegal aliens. Of course, that will form the basis of our discussion tonight, and I'm sure that those who are wondering what this Dreamers program is all about, it was started or created in June uh, 15th, 2012, by the Obama administration after Congress failed to pass the Development Relief and Education for Alien Minors, that is Dream Act. Uh, it's supposed to protect 800,000 young undocumented Im immigrants from uh, deportation brought to U.S. by their parents as children. Now, applicants vetted for any criminal history or threat to national security and must be students or have completed completed school or military service, and uh, those protected under DACA, known as DREAMers, and uh, 787,580 have been granted approval. Now, over to rules to comply to be uh, DACA. Uh, one has, has to have arrived in the U.S. before age 16 have lived in the U.S. since June 16th, 2017, cannot be older than 30 years. When the program began in 2012, application cost $495, and uh, program protects them from deportation, granting them a two-year reprieve, deferral uh, from deportation last uh, two years, and can apply for renewal as long as you do not commit any crime during that period. Most dreamers are from Mexico, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, and some are uh, from Africa as well. The largest numbers live in California, Texas, Florida, and New York. They currently range in age from 15 to 36, according to the White House. Cool, 63% got better paying job, 54% bought their first car, 48% got a better paying job, and 12% bought their first home. It seems there's a group of individuals who are doing really or very well. Now, it's time we, we start our studio discussion here, and uh, we have our power panel of Mark Bichachi, who is a regular contributor here on Africa, on Bottom Line Africa, and then we have George uh, Mushi from Fragomen Immigration Consultants, as well as Dennis Nthombi, a security and close protection analyst. They're going to join me right now here on the show. Of course, if you're just joining us, this is Bottom Line Africa and uh, there we go we have uh, George Dennis together with Mark good evening gentlemen and welcome to the show good evening thank you now Mark let me just uh, start with you being a regular here uh, you've seen you know huge number of youths trying to move you know from Africa uh, to these European countries and some of them have been risking their lives in doing so does this mean that situation in Africa is that bad or they're seeing a bright future on the other side of the Mediterranean you know, the, the reality for any Kenyan is Kenya is one of those countries in Africa, believe it or not, mm -hmm. that is doing very well. But I'll give you an, an example of a country called Senegal. Yes. In Senegal, it is a semi-arid country. There is no agriculture. Mm -hmm. Young people living in the villages have no hope of employment, education, or any form of making money. So what f happens in these countries is there, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, criminals mm -hmm. who create routes into Europe by which these young people go into Europe hoping to get a job as measly as cleaning toilets and tables. Mm -hmm. And that is actually much better than their reality at home. It's mm -hmm. quite different for me as a lawyer because if things get hard in Nairobi, mm -hmm. there's two acres in Bungoma I can go to. But for them, there is no plan B, and most importantly, they seem not to have a future. So much of Western Africa and Saharan West Africa, to be specific, you will see a lot of migration happening. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, you have a lot of brain drain, but in that side of of, of the world, it is everybody. It's not even going to seek a higher education. Any job is better than where they are. Mm -hmm. And this is really what the problem is in, 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 in Africa. Yes. However, mm -hmm. on the side
outside of the Europeans, we need to remember that they have an aging population. This population is also relatively wealthy. So you cannot expect a wealthy person to do menial tasks in hotels, in, 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 um, in clubs, in yes. lounges, in all uh -huh. these places. And, and, and Mark, this is where I want to bring Dennis into this mm. conversation. Of course, Dennis is a security and close protection analyst. Now, Dennis, uh, President Donald Trump, that is the U.S. president, has just ended the amnesty protecting about 800,000 immigrants. And one of the reasons is that, you know, this is a population that poses, like, you know, a security threat to the U.S. He has accused them of, you know, getting involved in drug trafficking. What is your opinion on this first? Um, certainly, the greatest question in America is the question of immigration and the question of insecurity and any other person or uh, uh, certain immigrants who portend security threats to America are certainly are uh, perceived uh, as, as, as people who should be deported, uh, you know, uh, without any further considerations. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think America has certainly genuine concerns to address. But the, the interesting thing about security is that there's a thin line uh, between security, democracy, and humanitarian help. Uh -huh. and, 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 and sometimes, you know, policies have to be drawn within that. And I'm sure that's why the amnesty was put up to see how then do you deal with uh, a, a sort of a humanitarian crisis and you're not being seen as the country that aggresses the same. Uh, but some of these concerns you see as, uh, you, know, you know, when um, uh, the issue of terrorism quite rose in America, of course, uh -huh. um, uh, you know, a, a lot of the aggressors were actually immigrants. Uh, so there's a genuine uh -huh. concern in America that needs to be addressed. By but then how do you address mm -hmm. this critical, uh, uh, you know, aspect of security in America? And America really takes the security of its nation and its people as a priority. How mm -hmm. do you balance that with the aspect of um, the issue of humanitarian and the fact that you want to be seen mm -hmm. as somebody who is kind, uh, uh, you know, you know you, you, to, to, uh, to the world? And yeah. uh, this is where I want to bring George also into this conversation, being an immigration uh, expert. Before we even talk about the reasons that make these, uh, you know, young people cross over uh, into Europe, uh, the U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is on record having said, you know, that, you know, this amnesty uh, that, pro that, is protect that protects these uh, immigrants that, you know, go to about 800,000 in number is illegal. And uh, Kenya also has its own problem with refugees. Now, which kind of precedence will the U.S. set for, for a country like Kenya? Uh, thank you, Yusuf. I think it is important to put this issue in, into perspective. Mm -hmm. The U.S. is grappling with a larger problem of uh, undocumented immigration. And as we speak, we have about 40 million people in the U.S. that are not documented. Mm -hmm. Now, this particular category of uh, people are the ones that went to the United States. Um, they were brought into the United States as children. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, they have been in the U.S., they have been going through school, some of them have gotten jobs. Mm. And therefore, the U.S. has been, since 2007, been struggling to ask themselves, what can they do with this uh, category of people, uh, bearing in mind that they have been in the U.S., gone through the systems, uh, and so forth. Now, when you talk about Kenya, we have similar problems. Um, and the situation is the same. The reason why we have refugees in Kenya, and very many of them, is because mm -hmm. for a long time, Kenya has been the... The, the most peaceful country in the region, so that when people are under attack in their country, they would run to Kenya for, for refuge. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, like if you look at the ones from Somalia that have been here for more than 20 years, they have gone through schools in Kenya, some of them are you know, professionals in their own right. So we, even in Kenya, we may start thinking and asking ourselves, can we use similar uh, situation where we look at some of these very good professionals and that can be useful to our economy and see how to integrate them in our, in our systems. Mm -hmm. However, what we are seeing now from the Western world is the, uh, the situation where every country is starting to get very uncomfortable with uh, foreign nationals in their country. Mm -hmm. uh, U.S. is a good example. You've seen the U.K., the Brexit is purely about immigration. So at the end of the day, even in Kenya, you remember, Yusuf, when we had the issues of terrorism in a few mm. years back, there were discussions about shutting down the, the, the refugee camp, yes. camps in the country. Mm -hmm. um, the legality of that was questioned, of course, because you cannot force people to go to, to countries where they are under threat. Mm -hmm. However, it was, a, the, it was one of the reasons why we started discussing as a country. And I see a lot of the time we try to, you know, cast as passions against some of the countries that try to deal with the issues of immigration. Mm -hmm. But then at that time, for the first time in very many years, I started seeing Kenyans 
uh, you know, starting to look at some people that, and refer to them as refugees, as terrorists, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it is really within the, raj the larger issue and the problem of illegal immigration mm -hmm. and the issues of now, issues of international security and so forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, n n now, Mark, we've seen uh, President Trump ending this amnesty, you know, on about 800,000 uh, children. Uh, if you look at statistics, most of them are doing really, really well from the uh, video well there we've had earlier. 54% of them have bought uh, their first car, 48% got a better paying job, 12% bought their first homes. Are we seeing a situation where uh, Trump is trying to, you know, uh, boost his anti-immigration agenda? I think you're being quite nice when you call it anti-immigration. I'll tell you for free that Trump is a white supremacist. It is nothing to do with immigration. It's got nothing to do with the economic effect of migration on these countries. The truth mm -hmm. of the matter is the United States of America and California to be specific, the economy cannot stand without immigrants. There's no one to pick their apples and oranges. There's no one to flip their burgers. There's no one who's willing to start from the bottom rank of the ladder to climb up that particular social ladder. Mm -hmm. They need immigrants. Even in Europe, it's the same story. Where does the question of pushing out immigrants come from? It comes from the fact that there is still a neo-Nazi uh, agenda simmering to the surface now that where the white uh, governments such as Trump's uh, or Le Pen, if she had gotten into France, mm -hmm. where they are pushing the agenda that white countries are for white people. Mm -hmm. That is really what the question is. Because if you look at, at, at uh, the owner of, of Tesla, he came from South Africa, an immigrant. If you look at uh, the smartest person to ever live in the decade, the creator of the atomic bomb that ended the Second World War, mm -hmm. was a German who migrated to America. Mm -hmm. If you look at Steve Jobs, his parents were immigrants. If you look at Barack Obama, his father was an immigrant. So the reality of the matter, on the net, and you can look at all the research, that the people who tend to migrate into countries, including Kenya, have worked harder than the locals. The criminal element in it is very little. But mm -hmm. what politicians use it for is politicians know if you cannot run on sympathy, you run on hate. And if you give people a person to hate without a reason, they will vote for you. Mm -hmm. This is what is going on in the West, and it's very, very sad to, for it to be reflected, even in African countries sometimes. Well said, uh, Mark. That statement, of course, was issued uh, by the Attorney General, the U.S. Attorney General, Jeff Sessions. But Trump himself made some statement with regards to that amnesty uh, that he ended, uh, that was supposed to protect about 800,000 uh, individuals. Let's listen to what he had to say data provided by the Department of Justice, the vast majority of individuals convicted of terrorism and terrorism-related offenses since 9-11 came here from outside of our country. We have seen the attacks at home, from Boston to San Bernardino to the Pentagon and, yes, even the World Trade Center. We have seen the attacks in France, in Belgium, in Germany, and all over the world. It is not compassionate, but reckless, to allow uncontrolled entry from places where proper vetting cannot occur. Well, and this is where I want to bring Dennis in, being a security expert. Dennis, you've heard what the U.S. President uh, said there with regards to immigrants. He's blaming you know, all the cases of insecurity in the, US, in, in, in the U.S. of these immigrants. Of course, Kenya also has a refugee camp. At one point, they were being, being blamed for the terror attacks that has been happening in the country. Do you think that's the case? These immigrants, refugees, should be blamed for all the problems uh, in a country as far as security situation is concerned? Uh, certainly, the two things here um, that, of course, uh, come to play. The one fact is that the political thing is that uh, President Trump was elected on a platform of the fact that he promised to sort out the issue of immigration and insecurity, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, uh, primarily the aspect of uh, terrorism. And he has to deliver on mm -hmm. his promises. And, and, and to be very honest, and, and, and then the other fact is that, uh, uh, you know, there's 
-hmm. proven evidence that a, a lot of the um, attacks on American soil have been uh, mm -hmm. orchestrated uh, by suddenly what quote unquote mm -hmm. they'll call immigrants mm -hmm. and they're about and America has has many enemies as uh, as, as as portended as we have seen over the years yes and, and and so he won on that platform and based on the fact he has to deliver on his promises because certainly that is why he was elected mm -hmm. but you know if we look at it suddenly and I said is that there's a balance between the aspect of uh, humanitarianism and the aspect that he has to deliver politically and the other aspect is that he has to deliver on the fact that you know he's a commander-in-chief of his armed forces and the fact that there's genuine insecurity in America mm -hmm. but uh, you know if you look at it uh, perhaps there could be aspects of collusion with uh, suddenly other Americans that are not pro-Trump and their politics coming in and and perhaps gen genuinely you can't blame all of it uh, on, 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 on uh, the fact that uh, these are immigrants but what they are saying is that we are targeting those ones who have criminal records who have committed certain other felonies mm -hmm. or uh, uh, people basically, uh, you know, who, who've been involved in criminal records. Yeah. So I don't but think this is like a blanket approach mm -hmm. where suddenly they'll say everybody will be deported and they're about. And you know, what they're saying is that do not leave gray within mm -hmm. uh, our soil. Of what course. it is that we need to know is that we need to yes. know who are you uh -huh. and they're about. So if you've been convicted, certainly you mm -hmm. need to leave this country. So I, 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 I guess for any uh -huh. other country, then uh, some of those concerns will be legitimate there about of course by ending the amnesty program that you know was covering about 800,000 people that those who are going to say that you know US is some sort of resorting to a blanket condemnation condemning all these uh, immigrants but George this is where I want to bring you in if you look at the statistics since 2015 about 1.5 million Africans you know crossed into Europe by sea that's a very risky uh, process then most of them don't make it even uh, to Europe now let's focus on these African countries where these immigrants come uh, from for example Eritrea uh, there's uh, you know some other countries from Western Africa why do you think this is the case does it have to do with poor governance in African countries uh, thank you Yusuf I think um as a matter of fact, we have problems in Africa that we know, issues of poor governance, issues mm -hmm. of uh, weak economies. Um, and then there are two things, you know, there is always the push and, 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 and pull factor. Mm -hmm. One of the things, in terms of the, the pull factor, United States and Europe has been marketed over, over a long time through the movies, through the media, as, as the, you know, the future, where things are happening, you know, very nice things, life is great. Mm -hmm. So that pulls a lot of us in, in this part of the world where we start now dreaming of that good life in Europe or in the U.S. Uh -huh. Then there is also the push factor. And you, you did cite countries like Eritrea, Ethiopia, we have the Gambia, we have Senegal, like uh, Mark did talk about. Those are countries where life is quite unbearable. And therefore, uh -huh. people in those countries will do anything that they can do to get a better life. And the better life they see it in going to that other next country mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. or in the, in the U.K. or in Europe in general. If, even if it means that they're endangering their life. Uh, now, Mark, let's yes. talk about uh, the wall that Trump has promised between uh, the U.S. and Mexico. And we're getting reports that, you know, Trump, uh, from uh, the ban on amnesty here, the Trump hopes to increase uh, pressure on congressional Democrats to accept other hardline elements of his uh, immigration agenda. Among them, the construction of that wall he has been talking about. You know, it is quite sad that the United States decided to elect a president whose uh, grammar is limited to a class six student in <laughs> Kenya, and his ability to understand uh -huh. international affairs is quite limited. Now, even if Trump is talking about a wall, let us remember that this has come from a physical wall to a fence-like wall to a fence that has uh, um, solar panels on top of it. This wall is something that Trump has imagined and has even imagined that a foreign country can be forced to pay for it. Now, the reality of the matter, we are waiting to see what congressional Democrats will do. But this mm -hmm. is a funny move because remember that the, the Republicans hold majority in both houses. Mm -hmm. so in Trump making a deal with the Democrats, and the Democrats, their hope is to sneak in certain democratic uh, principles that they hope uh, that will be adopted in this budget, because the Democrats are fighting for, because false, uh, Planned Parenthood has been defunded uh, largely by the Trump administration. So there are certain things that the Democrats believe in that they want Trump to push in, and they're willing to give Trump a concession in order to be able to deliver this. And remember, Trump had threatened to have a government shutdown 
down if he's not given funding for his wall. Now, Trump is not playing logic in terms of building a wall. Building kilometers of wall does not make sense because, mm -hmm. well, there are ladders. But it is a political promise that he made to his base in Middle America. Now, the thing about Middle America is mm -hmm. it is a section of America that is not mm -hmm. very highly educated. They are mostly farmers and coal workers. And mm -hmm. these people will then believe anything that is symbolic of the protection of their jobs because mm -hmm. the threat has been that these 800,000 dreamers will come and take their jobs. Mm -hmm. That is not true. There are 400 million Americans. Unemployment hits maximum 6%. How mm -hmm. is less than 1% of the population going to take their jobs? So this is a political move on the part of Trump. He is looking at his re-election. He has not been able to deliver in on any of his promises. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he's looking for something that will be the poster child of the Trump presidency mm -hmm. towards his base in middle America. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where I want to bring Dennis in uh, once again. Dennis, uh, you've seen the immigration crisis, you know, Africans trying to cross over into these European countries. How can African countries bring an end to this? And is it a security concern? Certainly, Africa is, uh, has largely over the years been known as the Red Continent mm -hmm. uh, because of the mere fact that uh, it actually portends what we call insecurity, harsh environment. Uh, and this harsh environment comes about, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have the issue of insecurity. If you look at Africa, suddenly sometimes and most of the times, uh, almost about half mm -hmm. of it is in what it is that we call a security crisis, suddenly emanating from a bad what it is that we call a non-political, uh, non-democratic political systems, uh, uh, you know, whereby there's orchestrated crisis uh, uh, through, you know, non-democratic political systems uh, uh, that, that want to harvest, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, they're about from uh, uh, bad politics. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, it's absolutely impossible for a family or anybody to thrive within those circumstances. Mm -hmm. But also you can see the issue of uh, uh, disease, the issue of uh, lack of opportunities, and the fact that America is painted as a dream of the world. When you go to America, certainly you will thrive and you'll be able to lift your, mm -hmm. your, 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 your family out of poverty. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things that uh, we need to do is resolve the security crisis in Africa. And mm -hmm. this is where America can, uh, can come in and help us. And, and uh, instead of coming in to politicize uh, Africa further, they should come and help grow democracy and build democracy and sometimes stop playing uh, the politics of regime changes mm -hmm. and stop playing the politics of resources. And any other thing, Africa needs a sol solution around democracy and suddenly a solution around mm -hmm. uh, you know the securitization so that then we can be able to thrive and mm -hmm. people will not think of leaving this country and and so that's how we can also make Africa suddenly an environment that is not harsh to life to life mm -hmm. or a, a, a continent that almost is impossible to carry life to 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 uh, suddenly to to certain ends well said Dennis I think that will serve as your final comment on this show now uh, George as much as you're going to comment on how Africa is going to bring end uh, to this immigration uh, crisis do you think there is some sort of double standard that is applied uh, by European countries on Africa because they have their own immigration uh, crisis we have our own refugee crisis do you think there's some sort of a double standard that is being applied yeah, uh, thank you. Certainly, there are, there are always those kind uh, two ways of dealing with Africans and, and the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. um, but then, that is how they want to deal with the immigration. Uh, and then the issue is, what are we doing to fix our own immigration? Mm -hmm. Even within Africa itself, uh, Yusuf, if you have tried to travel, if you try to get, say, South African visa, you will be profiled in such a way that you think you're going to, to heaven. Mm -hmm. But I think the point is, in Africa, if we want to have a situation where our citizens stay in our own country, let us fix our economy, let us fix our politics, let us fi fix how we do things. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you, very few people will be willing to go out there and uh, risk their lives. At the risk of you know, mm -hmm. dying at the ICs because mm -hmm. they would have a lot of things to do back home. Mark your final comment. 
let us remember that the United States of America spends about a billion dollars a day mm -hmm. on its war effort, creating a crisis in Syria, which is a proxy war between the United States and Russia. They cannot create a problem and then pretend to say that the problem has been created by someone else. What the Americans need to do is stop spending so much money in creating wars and spend a lot more money in creating opportunities and economic opportunities for African countries countries, for uh, Arabian countries, and all these countries where they're involved in. Have you ever seen a factory said this factory was donated by the people of the United States? No. Mm -hmm. They only donate things that will keep the African mind enslaved. So the reality of the matter, this refugee crisis is a creation of the Americans. Even the Mexicans who go into America, it is the meddling of Americans in South America mm -hmm. that brought instability in that region. So America needs to, to, take, to take in the chickens that have come home to roost mm -hmm. and take political and economic responsibility for the chaos they've caused over the centuries. Thank you very much, Mark. Always a pleasure to have you on board. And thank you very much, George, as well as uh, Dennis Ndombi, for your input in this show. Now, it's time we cross over to a clip of the day. Now, images of the day carries a lot of significance to Africa's governor's history. Now, 20 years on from his death in exile in Morocco,